so a few weeks ago it was a Thursday where I was sorting out um, the scene changes just shown you in the previous video um, and then I spent the Friday uh, sadly stressing out about the game working, I got in late um, I was trying to fix quite a few bits for it to be tested and shown in front of the class and a lot of it just wasn't working and it wasn't a very good day for me um, in terms of how I felt towards the game and building it and everything to be honest so um, that day wasn't the best so then after that um, I had even as uh, tutor said, just had the weekend off, so I took a few days out from doing the game because I put I think I put a lot of stress on myself to get it done in time and how to um and getting it working, putting a lot of hours, which wasn't very much helping. So I went away from that weekend after um the break and then started sorting out the ma like sort of the major problems from that day. And the first one was the parallax in that there was a lot of inconsistency in how it loaded up in the scene when entering the next one. So I tested that out with the, with the scene transitions. It sort of loaded up in different places and went at different speeds, went different lengths across the screen. Um, but obviously the, the scripting and the the distance between the scenes stayed the same. So it wasn't it wasn't ideal to have that because then it could on the day of showing the game it wouldn't it might just completely screw up. Um, and then look obviously awful in front of those game designers, which you don't want. So um, the first, I ended up resorting to disabling the parallax scrolling um, until the camera reached back to the player. So the parallax shows the scene, like this, the camera shows the scene um, layout and what the, to do for the player um, without it. And because it, it's moving quite a, not a fast pace, but it's moving at a pace and doesn't last very long that I think it's not very noticeable that the parallax isn't on and it speeds up the camera movements as well which obviously we want who's done under the pla the camera lagging between um, when moving in the scenes um, as it won't look as good as it could have so activates once the player follow camera is happening again and then the, that means I test, um, did a lot of testing of that and that means there was no um, inconsistencies with it loading into the scene so the player loading in the same position every time the camera moved back to the same position every time so that was done and dusted and out of my hair um, and I spent the rest of that day um, sorting out th um, sort of throw animations which still had um, got done for me so that was just adding them into the animator uh, between the left and right as um, we can't just we're not flipping the sprite so because of the bag so uh, those are separated into two things added to an uh, idle the, the move um, the right walking script Excuse me, this plays a bit naughty. Um, and then I went into testing ha um, the using the rock throw as I already had the rock throw on it, but it didn't involve the animation. So I originally tried the invoke method, which um, can start a function. So um, which starts a function that you add into the script um, after so many seconds. So it doesn't. So the rock throw will actually happen once the animation is finished, rather than just when it started. Otherwise, that means we'll just look the rock will sort of move off even before even so you got started moving the arm so I didn't delay it between about 0 0.8 and 1 second um, it depends um, once I'm like into the final testing I'll med around with those numbers just so it's all but it's around that mark and then that was I was you tried to use other ones but that I think they invoke one um, like um, using I numerator so the yield waiting a few seconds for it to happen I think the invoke method was the best for it um, so then that was the end of those um, few days of that testing and then I'm moving on um, to the next stuff which will be in the next video so um, this is now another recap back to a couple of days ago back to the 11th um, and this the first um, sort of plan of action for that day was finalising scripts for scene transitions um, so this was allowing um, refer like referencing between the fade script and the uh, the scene management script so that the the fade dictated whether the scene loaded so once the player had reached the end of the level which will be indicated uh, once the UI elements are involved um, sort of say to say play like move to this bit then once it hits this point um, like the tutorial will let them know that this is the point they need to reach in order for the screen um, to fade and then to load that scene so once the they hear that certain point the fade um, creates the black screen over the camera which is following the camera and once the fade is above or equal to one uh, this then references back to the C management scripts and then loads that um, uh, and then so it's just like um, just loads it which works fine um, and because I was before I was using two different colliders where one of them referenced the fade and one of them referenced the C management script but this um, it occasionally didn't run or it didn't work as like properly sometimes and where it would fade and then not load the screen 
because um, the player like stopping, which um, was done through testing, just to see if players constantly move forward once they reach the end of the fade, rather than just like stopping the movement. So uh, a lot of people tend to when it fades, they just stop moving, and then that means it didn't actually run the C management one. Um, so this is now like finished for that, and it can be just needs to be um, applied to the um, to remaining scenes um, for their transitions when they're fully tested, artwork's fully put in, and the UI elements are also fully put into them. I then spent the rest of the da day um, sorting out um, problems with the remaining uh, with the ladder issues that I found out during the, uh, that day of testing the Friday that was will not be mentioned. Um, so previously the, mo the jumping and the horizontal movement messed up with the ladder colliding, as when you horizontally move through the ladder, this automatically means that you're actually that you're on it and sets the gravity scale to zero. So a problem that was um, was encountered like really early on when um, testing in front of the class. Um, was that when you jumped into it, then the gravity scale went to zero, so it was sort of like the player limbs sort of floated down the ladder, but still within the jump animation, because obviously they hadn't hit the floor yet, which meant they they were still within that jump area, and then it sort of took a while to get down. Didn't look very good. It's just like, you know, it shouldn't happen in like a 2D animated controller. Um, so I decided to change it with... Um, um, so it changed the how the player gets on the ladder in that when you're moving horizontally for it or jumping um, it's completely it's deactivated at all and then they have to press a circle isn't being used so I use circle uh, immediately which the UI um, which the UI elements will let players know that when they uh, sort of uh, like obviously like a sort of speech bubble above their head saying press circle just jump on ladder so they press circle and it means they get on the ladder um, so this like immediately sets the boolean for like being on the ladder to true and all those like um, booleans in the players in the movement scripts that come with it so then the box collides activated the climb idle is like linked so it looks like he jumps on the ladder and then he moves up and then i use the same how they get up on the ladder as the same before so when they hit a collider it um takes like the game ball and then moves the player up in an offset in the y-axis and then like them climbing up and then transition above the floor um, on top and then for getting back down the ladder it's then like a holding circle so when they hold this as soon as that hold circle cycle starts the pull down which may have to be um, edited because I'm currently just using the pull up in reverse but it's always heights and um, means he just sort of grabs thin air or may like potential need to decide is maybe adding like a sort of little ladder like like banister thing or like a little hole area where he can sort of hold on to and then puts himself down because um, currently he doesn't like it works but it doesn't look as good like it doesn't look right currently so um, once you hold the, the uh, circle that plays and then it moves after so like a second or 1.2 seconds uh, it then moves the player down in like a uh, and then they can move up and down it um, without there being problems with like horizontal movement and then animations changing so that was the um, ladders fix, which was obviously like a integral part of the like the movement in the game, is a lot of like ladder movements and going up and down them. So now that I'd sorted, I can then move on just to the gameplay testing rather than screwing out with the animatic controller, because that is like the one that's taken up the most time, which I didn't want it to. But now those um, those are sorted, and and I can move on to more uh, scene building. So once I've sort of, um, have got those um, gameplay issues sorted, um, last yesterday was. So today I'm talking today. Yesterday um, we're finally caught up now. Um, Silva got to me the artwork for the scene with the two counterweights. Um, so I moved back into this one and um, spent a late night at the library. Um, and then during the day just building the scene. And this was just like putting putting the artwork um, into like a single um, into single game objects. So I could put the layers in properly. Gave him the sort layers. Um, move them. Um, into the right area and the areas and then like taking out all the sprightliness of the platforms putting them in the right position making sure the player can move around the whole map nicely um the, the lad putting in the prefabs for the ladders and the um and the rope um which will be in, instead of just appear like instead of it appearing it will be instantiated um once the game um game platform like games and the game win script ends yeah, so it will just be in, um, oh, sorry, I cut out the video, so I'm just starting a new one. Um, so this had to be, yeah, so it just be instantiated um, in the end, and then I was just testing all the ladders working, um, all the prefabs for the um, for the customs were put in. Um, so once I had sorted how the art, um, how the artwork looks, that looks all fine, in terms of the layers and how it all transitions together, um, I went into then testing, 
the um, the actual build, like the previous builds and like the boulders and how they interact and stuff. Um, so the first bit was just um, testing that the pick up the player could pick up the um, pick up the prefab uh, customs, both because there's two of them this time, obviously in this scene. So I was testing that both of them had the um, ability to be like they didn't interact interact with the player anymore, that they ignored the player and had the um, box collides attached to them where they could be picked up so I just added that then into the inventory script similar to how I did previously the rock and the uh, floating custom so that was uh, so I accessed both use and like use inventory and inventory scripts made sure they were all up to date um, with how they um, like how the player would pick them up um, and then tested and then obviously put in the again tested the what's the word now uh, the triggers so they can be so the player can put them down in the right place so the triggers are next to where um, the two um, the two customers will be placed in the scene. Um, so I sort of did that um, late night whilst testing and stuff. Um, and then I also test went through testing of um, which will be um, shown in the video. Just testing the boulders and how they move down. So obviously, if you can see from the scene, the um, the player will have to throw the rock at the sort of bowl the little collection uh, the bag up the top and then once the boulder moves down it will hit the two uh, customs in the um, further down the scene so I was just testing the masses and how the boulder moved that it was actually able to move down the scene um, in accordance to the customs and um, whether the light counterweight and the normal counterweight were put down so what uh, just tested out different masses of both the light counterweight the heavy counterweight the final fences at the bottom and the boulder as well and the drag because obviously um that's basically the drag for the angle i think it's the linear drag or angular drag i can't remember one of the two um for it i changed that so that's the friction so that when it hits onto the moving platform below the tree it sort of comes to a halt sooner and then is able to go back down the tree otherwise because what a lot of the testing despite changing gravity scales and masses the boulder then just moved across like across it and went straight into the counterweight um, which obviously um, we don't want and we need it to go down the scene. So I then uh, went out to stand up late testing that out um, and then that was all working so then I just needed to test um, like using the player the actual run through of the script which we'll be doing tomorrow. I then um, spent um, part of yesterday and last night um, working on delaying um, the jump function um, so someone uh, I think it was Sam's boyfriend was testing the game and then obviously mashing a lot of people in like side scrollers and all games will just button mash um, for jumping because you know it's just the nature of it nowadays. Um, so he was button mashing it, and when he was button mashing it, it sort of it was running through the the jump cycle with like without jumping, and there was sort of a lot of like leg bobbing and like um, excess of the um, the landing sort of transition between them going on, which obviously doesn't look very good. Um, and then it's sort of like the the button mashing overrides a lot of what um, a lot of the uh, the, um, the animator tree. So what I um, messed around with changing um, which script um, tells can jump to be true. Because originally it was in the move scripts, and I tried just um, changing it into I new I numerator yielding um, waiting for two seconds, and then saying can jump is true again within the collision enter. Um, so that's when it reaches back the floor in the ca in the case of the floor it reaches the floor again and then um, can jump is true but waiting after two seconds but then that also for some reason messed up the horizontal movement and just left it idle and I changed that around quite a bit and it's still having a lot of problems um, so instead I think I moved the can jump into the uh, into the SQL animation script rather than the move scripts and say that when it's pressed um, so it's when the jump is pressed um, this like it does the jump function um, and um, this can jump um, like can jump is true and then it waits two set and then oh, it's fo that's when it's false and then it only says can jump is true once it's waited two seconds so that's just using uh, I enumerate uh, it in the sequel animation scripts so then that doesn't so the pressing of the joystick button zero which is X the button it doesn't and it doesn't interfere with the horizontal movement or the rest of the animated tree or rest of the movement scripts that's just purely um, for the jumps and then that had that working where the player wasn't able to button mash wasn't able to jump two seconds after then the landing again so despite button mashing um, it didn't have any problems with the animated tree and um, and left uh, the gameplay running a lot more smoothly, which I was happy with.